Hi everyone, it's Frank Rotz. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, perfect opportunity today to talk about uh, getting cold weather gear on a budget. And I've got some things to talk about that hopefully will keep you comfortable, get you on some more fish, and uh, save you some money. Um, if you're newer to fishing for performance cold weather gear, um, there's more to it than just wearing flannel shirts like this. Um, these kind of shirts are great for, you know, early fall, but as it gets colder um, and conditions change, um, cotton is generally not your best layering material. Um, there's a lot better options out there. Um, so one thing you definitely uh, want to note is that you're going to have to determine uh, what your activity level is when you're actually out on the water or whatever it is you're doing, maybe ice fishing. So basically, if you were moving around and you were active, that would be one type of activity level. Um, if you were moderate, moving around, and then stationary, that would be another. And then, of course, like stationary, like ice fishing, or if you were just fishing with a bobber and not at all moving. So if you're moving around a lot, breathability becomes a key. So if you've got a flannel like this, which is cotton and lined with like a polyester that doesn't breathe at all, I'm just wearing this around the house. I've been in and out of the house. I'm in the basement now, it's keeping me warm. It's not high performance. But I used to use stuff like this years ago, even when I worked outside in Chicago Heights, Illinois, we really didn't know any better. Um, we'd walk around and stuff like this and sweat with other that's all there was. Well, there are a lot better options out there. So what you wanna do is if you're moving around, you wanna make sure that you don't overheat. Number one way to do that is to layer. But again, a lot of people, they layer with a lot of cotton and cotton is not a good insulator. So. There's two ways to do this. If it's not that hot, what you want to do is you want to use a breathable material. So this is Cabela's Dry Plus. It is basically their version of Gore-Tex. Now a lot of people see this and they think pricey and they never go near it and they never touch it. Well, Christmas is coming up or if you, everyone has a birthday. Um, the thing about this type of stuff is it breathes. So if you actually put your hand through here, and you blow on that, you're gonna feel the breeze come through. This is really good when it's humid and a little cooler because it's gonna transfer that perspiration out, and that's really important. Um, also, this type of material, Dry Plus or Gore-Tex or something similar that's breathable, um, it is going to, uh, it's versatile. You can layer underneath it, as I'll show you in a little bit. You can wear it, you're com usually comfortable between like 65 and all the way down to freezing. Um, so like I said, this is really good from about 65 uh, temperature wise uninsulated down to about 50 um, it's worth the dollar because you can insulate underneath it it's lightweight and versatile it's definitely worth a few extra dollars if you can't afford like something like dry plus or a bass pro brand um, frog tog is a great entry level i just don't have the frog tog with me frog tog is good but it's like a recycled cardboard material so it's not going to get you the same comfort and performance as this if you want to try it out frog tog is a great start so if you are using something that's breathable, um, what's a real key is you're layering stuff like this. And um, again, this kind of stuff that is gonna be a synthetic material, well, 65% cotton and then the rest is gonna be polyester. Um, this is going to be kind of in the middle between activity levels, between stationary and moving around. So 100% polyester, if you don't know that, polyester is a synthetic fiber. Um, with this stuff, you don't really have to quite drop as much money as, as you want to. The main thing is that you get the right one. So 100% polyester is gonna trap all your heat. This is gonna transfer a little bit. This is a Rocky brand. I got this from Amazon. It's not exactly the highest performance, but I got it on sale. Haven't even used it yet, which just goes to show you, again, you're allocating your money on what you're using it with. Um, I haven't quite used it that much, but that's the one thing you wanna do, is if you're using this type of stuff right here, you can layer with this type of stuff right here, your base layer type stuff, um, and you're gonna be comfortable. The one thing about people would say, give me long johns, those white long johns that are cheap, is those tend to be either cotton or polyester, and they either don't trap heat very well or they trap a ton of heat. So the comfort level on base layer is comfortable than more comfortable than long john. And for those of you, um, today is Veterans Day. Thank you for those that have served. Um, I've had people tell me they were long johns, geez, in the, in the military, I don't know. It's been quite some years since they've used that. So um, again, getting away from long johns and into some more performance stuff 
depending on how often you're out. If you don't even know if you're going out, maybe you don't need to bump up. This is a step one, uh, level one kind of a thing, getting acclimated to performance gear. So we've talked about breathable, we've talked about insulation, activity level. Last, we'll kind of go into, we went from early spring to kind of where we were early fall to kind of where we would be at now, right before winter. Now in the winter time, when it gets cold, um, a lot of people, this is a love-hate relationship. I really tend to like this stuff that is the old school. It's canvas. It's a little heavy. Um, this is a Cabela's One uh, pair of full bibs. Um, and I like Carhartt, but then again, Carhartt costs a little bit more money. Carhartt's always great. Um, but this stuff blocks the wind and is really good when, you're, when your activity levels are down. So um, where I'm at, I live in Northwest Indiana. I am less than 20 minutes from Lake Michigan. When we get a north wind, we feel it. I mean, we feel a north wind the last week of August. That is almost where you need a hat for some people. It gets that cold. So depending on where you're at, um, you may not need this canvas and you may want to use something more breathable. But this is good for lower activity levels. It blocks the wind. Some people like me prefer they'd rather be a little hot than be cold. And this is going to work great for you. And this stuff usually lasts forever. Um, that canvas, you really can't tear it. I used to wear canvas when I worked out in uh, Chicago Heights. I worked in a rail yard, had an outside job. And uh, that stuff works. Um, I also wore a snowsuit out there. I've got the grimiest snowsuit. I'd be embarrassed to even show that. Like a snowmobile type suit. You can use snowmobile type suits for ice fishing and that kind of stuff. It will cross over. So the only thing that I don't have that I'm going to have to admit would be like a performance um, pants and jacket like for fishing. Like Cabela's has it's called guide wear. Um, I don't know what Bass Pros is called. I believe it has a number. Um, that type of stuff, which is the highest end stuff that you see, um, that is if you're if you're fishing on a boat and you you know you're encountering cloudy conditions, rainy conditions, very wide temperature changes. Um, the advantage to that is you're not going to have to layer and undress as quickly and, and frequently. Um, if you're more of a casual fisherman, um, if you're a writer like me. That few seconds probably isn't going to make or break me, but if you're a tournament angler, you definitely want to get it right the first time. Um, it's worth the investment. So I say if you're going to be out on the water a lot or in the field um, and you have a little bit of extra money, see if you can bump up. If you can afford it, um, you probably won't regret it. Um, if you haven't bought any higher performance uh, fishing gear, um, there's never been a better time to do it. Um, like I said, getting into breathable just get a breathable jacket and it, it'll really change uh, what everything will do for you. Um, another thing I could talk about would be just lined, lined jeans with cotton or polyester. Polyester is going to insulate more. Those are not going to breathe. Um, so like I said, um, for budget cold weather gear, um, just start at square one, move your way up. Um, it's taken me quite a lot of years of, as I've invested a lot of money in these rods and these kind of things and uh, these waders. So I'm getting around to clothing last. Um, I hope those tips helped um, what you need to do to get started for uh, cold weather layering. Um, this is a great time of year if you can get out for whatever it is you do, fish hunt. And um, just glad to get another video out. Thank you for all the few a couple new subscribers that I've gotten. Like I said, if you haven't seen the last video, you know, I just want to keep this channel real and watch your videos. And, you know, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Um, I was actually taught by a pretty much an expert who used to work at the Hammond Cabela's. She really educated me. I thought I knew a lot about cold weather gear because I worked outside. Turns out I didn't know a damn thing really. Um, so Jessica Bowling taught me that. So um, about cold weather gear, um, it's worth a few extra bucks. Um, take care everyone. Um, please subscribe if you're new. Um, a lot of finesse fishing stuff I do here. Um, I'm going to be pouring my own baits in the spring and uh, trying to add a little bit of variety to the channel, talk about something different with the cold weather gear. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching.